stream like this is always going to present its own challenges and uh, that's also the uh, one of the fun parts of fly fishing you know finding challenges in challenging places challenging fishing um, with that being said uh, Tenkan is actually a great tool for very tight streams like this um, when you're when you're fishing tight streams a lot of it is going to come down to your technique and knowing how to fish and no matter whether you have a seven foot rod or 11 foot rod it's really just going to be you getting used to the gear knowing what to do with the tools you have with you I like to go for the simplest gear that I have, which is just a, uh, you know, a Tenkara rod, you know, no reel, no fly line, no, you know, just, uh, just a rod and line and a fly. That simplifies my gear quite a bit. When you're selecting your Tenkara rod for, and you know you're going to be fishing a very tight stream like the one that we are in, uh, you probably want to use the shorter rod, the shortest rod possible. Uh, so in this case, I'm using an 11 foot rod as opposed to a 13 foot rod and those two feet do make a difference when fishing a very tight stream. Uh, if I am using a longer rod, a 12, 13 foot rod, uh, all I have to do is just take advantage of, you know, a couple of different things that I can do with a rod. I mean, first, I can hold the rod up above the handle uh, or I can collapse one of the segments, still holding it here or collapse one of the segments and hold way above the handle so I'm effectively fishing an 8 foot rod and with this line I can do very miniature cast very nicely uh, it doesn't take much to cast and if I do hook a fish all I have to do is just open the rod up to take advantage of the leverage make sure the rod has its full strength uh, and then play the fish so finding a fish in a small stream like this is also going to present, present its own challenges I cannot raise my rod right overhead here uh, because there's trees right above me. So before I start fishing a real small stream, knowing my tactics and have my strategy figured out, figured out is going to be very important. I have to know exactly what is around me. I have to know where I'm going to be casting. I have to know whether if I hook a fish, how I'm going to be playing a fish. In this case, I probably have to keep my rod, you know, pretty low, or I'll have to move to my right. And there's a little bit of an opening there, try to play like that. I'll follow, this, I'll follow the fish down a little bit to the other side of the trees so it's a little bit more open and play there. Um, so tactics on a very tight stream are very important. You have to know what is around you, how you're going to be playing a fish, you know, if you catch one, um, which direction you should probably hook a fish when you do catch one. Um, so all these tactics are very important for a very small stream like this. So one thing that you always want to do in a small stream as well, because there are so many rocks and you might get your line, you know, to touch uh, branches and so on. Uh, very periodically, you do want to check your tippet. Um, you know, I usually pass my hand through it, and if I feel like it's a little bit rough or thinner than it should, uh, then I'll exchange it or put a new uh, piece of tippet in there. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is when you do tie your fly. So in this case, I always use just a uh, improved clinch notch, uh, just six wraps around, and then through the formed, and then through the uh, new loop that I just formed, it's an improved clinch. So I'll just tie that, cut the tag end after I set the notch. And one of the things you always want to do as well, especially when f fishing a little bit faster water or any small stream or any type of fishing you want to check your knot so give it a nice pull you know it's much better that you get the line loose right now when you're still testing than when than you do when a fish has in its in its mouth once you have that then you're ready to fish the snags are inevitable if you're fishing a six foot rod 10 feet of line six foot rod five feet of line whatever it is or 11 foot rod and 10 feet of line you are going to get snagged there's no question about it i do think that with the tenkata rod i do get snagged less often uh, primarily because i'm very well aware of what is around me uh, and i also have a lot of control over where my line is going if i do get snagged i'll, I'll always try to walk to the place where my fly got stuck uh, instead of leaving a fly behind i prefer not to leave any anything behind with a tenkata rod i'll try a couple shakes see if I can get my line to dislodge. 
you know, not very strong, just a few poles. If it doesn't, uh, then I'll collapse my rod, collapse each piece of it, of the rod, and then try to reach the line. So in this case, I'll have to walk to the line a little bit. So I'll reach my line. I'll close my rod all the way if possible, including the very tip, because uh, I do not want to break the tip of the rod. So I'll close it, leave the hard tip inside, and then I'll just pull on the line. If, you know, give it a few shakes. Uh, it's not always gonna get uh, unstuck, but sometimes you just have to break the tippet. That's why we always advise 5X tippet or thinner. Um, and when you pull your traditional Tenkata line and break the tippet, what is gonna happen is your line is gonna get coiled up um that's pretty common don't need to despair it's actually very easy to get it out first what you do is just uh you pass your hand through the line just kind of see that there's no knots in it pass it once and it, you already see that it's starting to get undone i mean the line just essentially just twisted onto itself uh, but you just pass your hand a few times through the line and then you have a notch in this case, or just undo the notch. Um, the knots are going to be always very easy to undo. They, you know, it's a very thick line, so it doesn't. Uh, the knots are not going to very, be very tangled. And I pass my hand through the line about three times so far, and it's almost completely undone. Then what I'll do is I'll extend the rod, and as I extend the rod, I'll pass my hand through the line, and that's going to be naturally undoing the uh, the coil of the line so I just extend it as I do I'll pass my hand through the line and now you see the line is turning the other direction and it's coming completely clean and that's it uh, my line is uh, still doing a few turns but that's uh, it's ready to fish again and uh, you know, I've been fishing this spot here, casting right underneath a tree there. And I, I know that my, my line can either travel right above this one tree or right below it. So I've been back casting very low below the tree and then forward casting low as well. Um, I can also do very short stroke uh, casts. You know, I can go up a little bit and then down. You know, very little effort uh, to completely roll my line out. Thank you.